Why, yes, I believe we shall. Oh, I got a live one here. <laughs> Live from Little Rock, it's Shane Plays Radio, Geek Talk Radio, a journey into the things we love. Thanks for joining me, whether you're listening live over the air on 96.5 FM, The Answer, or you're listening via the stream at the 96.5 FM, The Answer.com website, or if you're listening delayed on a podcast or on Krypton Radio, which is a week delayed, however you're listening, thanks so much for being here. Uh, and, and, you know, let me mention, let me go through my housekeeping notes real quick. We'll jump right into all the geeky goodness that is Shane Plays Radio, a journey into the things we love. First, don't forget that this is, first and foremost, live talk radio. It's just like political talk radio or religious talk radio or how do I fix my car talk radio or how do I do my garden, whatever. But it's geek talk radio and there's not a whole lot of that around. So we're doing something new and fun here. But you can call into the show if you want at 501-823-0965. That's 501-823-0965 during the live show. Love to talk to you. You can call in whether you're local or listening via the stream. I, I, I know I've got at least one person, Cassie Parks, who's listened from England live before. So feel free to call in. You can also tweet me at Shane Plays, S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S. And I do my best to keep an eye on the Twitter mentions during the show. Uh, also, the show notes and the links for today's show are up right now at shaneplays.com, S-H-A-N-E-P-L-A-Y-S.com. So as I'm doing news items and whatnot, you can go, if you're like, hey, I want to know more about that, or if you want to know more about you know how you can do the podcast or my Facebook page or any of that, so YouTube, any of that, you can go to shaneplays.com, check out the show notes and get all that information. Last, as, as I mentioned, we are carried on as a podcast after the live show. It usually goes out two or three days after, and that's on the blog at shameplays.com. It's on iTunes. It's on Stitcher. And now, suddenly, and what the heck do you know? We're on Google Play Music. So you can go to Google Play Music and find the Shame Plays podcast as well. And and as I mentioned earlier, we're on we're a week delayed on cryptonradio.com. Krypton Radio is sci-fi for your Wi-Fi. Okay, uh, this is the last week I'm going to mention our giveaway we have a brand spanking new shiny Castles and Crusades role playing game player's handbook, courtesy of show sponsor Troll Lord Games. So, what you got to do is you got to go to the Shame Plays Facebook page, which is linked on the show notes. It's linked on the main Shame Plays site. Uh, and you can also just go to Facebook and search for Shane Plays. Uh, and it'll be pretty obvious when you get there whether it's my page or not. Uh, and and there's, a, there's a post there that talks about it's pinned to the top, it talks about the Castles and Crusades player's handbook. All you have to do to enter, you don't even have to like the page, although I'd love you to do that if you hadn't already. All you got to do is like and share the post. That's it. But this is going to be the last week that I'm going to mention it. So uh, make sure make sure to jump on that. Uh, also, Castles and Crusades, you know, show sponsor Troll Lord Games, has a new, a new Kickstarter right now for Monsters and Treasures of Erda, and that, that's linked on the show notes. Check that out. And last, be on the lookout. This is another reason why you want to check out uh, the Shame Place Facebook and check out... Uh, you know, subscribe to that, like it or whatever. I'm working with show sponsor Game Goblins, and we're going to have organized role playing gameplay at the River City Comic Expo right here in Little Rock, June 11th, 12th. And we've got D and D, we got Pathfinder, we've got Castles of Crusades, we've got Star Wars, uh, we've got all kinds of cool games lining up. And I'm probably going to run some Numenera, and we got GURPS. So um, I, I've played in this GURPS game. It's GURPS Voltron, and it's cool. So come check it out, uh, and, and but you gotta you gotta buy your ticket through Game Goblins, and that gets you into a free game session. So be on the lookout for that. More information on that. Uh, other than that, want to introduce real quick. Uh, setting in with us today is uh, Captain America. Well, I, I'll say I love Facebook and the internet because used to you couldn't do this. I've known Nick for a few years online, and we've we we I kind of got to know each other through politics, and then we found out that we're both geeks. So, uh, and he's a Captain America, major Captain America geek. I said, a super fan. He's like, well, I'm not sure I'm a super fan. And then he showed me a ring he's wearing. I said, dude, you're a, you're a super fan. You're a super fan, Nick. Go ahead and admit it. Say hi to everybody. Yeah, just get up, go ahead and get up on the mic. All right. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, Nick, welcome to the show. Thank and you. what we're going to be talking about after the news segment is Captain America. So, we're going to be talking about uh, the uh, the movie 
And I guess trying not to give away big spoilers, but we'll also be talking about Captain America himself, and I'll have some Captain America trivia. And before we get to the news segment, I'll start off with a Captain America trivia piece right now. So, Nick, who created Captain America? Uh, that'd be Joe Simon and Joe, uh, Jack Kirby. That's right. Ding, ding, Absolutely. ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Right. And what year did he first debut? 1941. That's right. So this year is the 75th anniversary of Captain America. Oh, wow. Yes. Fantastic. Didn't yeah. That. Yeah. So it's, 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 yeah. In fact, uh, I didn't realize that until I was looking on the back of this comic book and it's talking about his 76. Because Marvel really had made a big deal about it being a 75th that I can tell. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, all right. So we're going to have Captain America trivia like that throughout the whole show. And if you, if anybody wants to call in and talk about Captain America, either the movie or the character, feel free. 501-823-0965. You can ask trivia. You can tell us what you like about Captain America, what you don't. doesn't matter. So go ahead, uh, Zach, go ahead and key us in on the old uh, newsroom there. Let's see if they're working today. Oh, there they go. Working hard. We got old school and new school journalists because you hear the little keyboards and you also hear typewriters. It's a, it's a whole mix. <laughs> we cover the gamut. Of what's considered geeky, whether it's old school or new school. So, uh, got it. Got leading with kind of a sad story. Well, not a kind of. It is a sad story. Um, Darwin Cook uh, passed away from cancer. I think at like one thirty Eastern this morning uh, from from cancer. We just found out within the past twenty four hours that he had cancer. His wife posted a blog called uh, "F Cancer," uh, but you can fill in the rest. And then she let everyone know that he was on palliative care, which is basically. Basically hospice. They're just trying to make you comfortable. Uh, he died at 53 years old at 1.30 a.m. Eastern this morning. And uh, the, there's a, sh- there's a uh, uh, news item linked at shameplays.com on the show notes. And, and they're asking if people want to make donations, you know, they can make them to the Canadian Cancer Society. And there's also a, a, a nonprofit evidently called the Hero Initiative. So, and the, and the family asked that, you know, we respect their privacy through this very difficult time. So, uh, to give just a quick idea, of, uh, Darwin's one of those uh, comic book creators that didn't have a huge output, but what he did, people, it's like beloved. People love it. Uh, people really connected with it. But he first started in animation. He worked on Ban- Batman the Animated Series uh, and Superman uh, the Animated. Now, he did do a comic book back in 1985, but he got known for... Um, Batman the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series. That's how he kind of really got his career. And then he then he kind of crossed over and had mainstream success in comics. And he also, I didn't know this, you know how the Batman Beyond Nick animated sequence, you know how it's so different from all the other animated intros? He animated that. I didn't know that. Zach, do you ever watch Batman Beyond? I love the show. Yeah, he yeah. animated that opening sequence, which is very mm-hmm. different from all the other animated intros to the to the uh, DC uh animated universe stuff yeah. so uh he also um he went on to write justice league the new frontier which was a very well-known uh it's kind of a silver age take updated on the justice league and that also ter- became an animated movie from dc and he was involved with that um and he and he also won an eisner award for the best single issue and the eisners are basically the oscars of comic books uh for the best single issue for his work on solo number no. five in 2005 um he worked on other stuff, including uh, 2002 graphic novel Selena's Big Score, which basically modernized Catwoman. He was a part of developing Future Quest, which is coming out soon from uh, DC, which is kind of a new take on the Hanna Barbera stuff. Uh, and, and so he's and he's just people really connected with his work. They really liked. Him. What did what did you what did you think about his stuff, Nick? Uh, I didn't read that much of it. I, I did catch. Uh... He did that revival of the spirit. Right. Yeah, back, he did the spirit. Yeah, Batman. Well, fantastic. he also did a Batman spirit thing. Right. Yeah, which right. was good. There's a, uh, they, have a, they have a trade out with it. You can go down and right. pick that up and, and check it out. It's, it's absolutely one of my favorite things that, he's, yeah. that, I've, that I've seen. Right, well, know. on the on like the Twitterverse and on Tumblr and everything, I mean, people are really picking up on this that he's gone. You know, first they're like, wow, he's sick, and now he's gone. So uh, anyway, just, you know, we, we hate, hate to have him go – a, I hate to see anybody go, and two, you know, he's 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 a, he's really contributed to the comics industry in the past, you know, twenty years or so. So, really hate that, and uh, you know, I my I would say my prayers. Other people may not agree with that, but you know, I, are, are with the family. So, um, anyway, uh, sorry sorry to hear that Darwin Cook is gone. Uh, in other local news, 
today and tomorrow. This is if you're listening to this by podcast, this is why you got to listen to this live, people, because you'll miss out. Uh, the Little Rock Comic Con is today and tomorrow uh, in, at the Benton um, Convention Center. So I know you live kind of up in that neck of the woods. Are you going to try to drop by there? Yeah, I always try to make an appearance down there. Yeah. Uh, Mike, uh, Mike was my comic book vendor for a long time. Oh, is he? Is he the, the guy who runs it? Yeah, Mike, Mike Tennell. And uh, I need to get hooked it, up with them. I've I've gotten hooked in with the River City Comic Expo, but I haven't I haven't gotten involved with Little Rock Comic Con. So I need to. Maybe next year I'll try to do a remote from there or talk to them or something like that. Yeah, it, it's a good event, and he's got a lot of uh, a lot of talent out from the Power Rangers. Yeah, and I saw like that. that. Cool yeah. stuff that, that some of the younger guys might be interested in. It's it's, it's just a it's a fun show. Okay, cool. So anyway, it's at the Benton Convention Center. Uh, the the face you can look search for Little Rock uh, Comic Con online or on Facebook. It's also linked on the on the show notes. Uh, so and then this is kind of uh, a bummer to a lot of people. Disney Infinity, the video game, has been discontinued. So there was a lot of people that were really loving it. It took all the various Disney properties and put them together. It was a Zach. Did you ever play it or ever see it? Where it's kind of like where you buy the little action figure, uh-huh. and then you can put the character into the game, and it's all these different genres mixed together. Like maybe the Incredibles, and then it might be the Marvel heroes, and it might be the Disney stuff. But a lot of people really liked it. Uh, but Disney's shutting it down, and there's 300 people losing their jobs. So did you ever did you ever play that or know anybody who did? Nick did not. Yeah, I know people who did. I, I, I work with people who have little Disney Infinity um, figures on their desks, you know, and they look great on their own, but then they're also, you can put them in the game and play with them. So I guess they're going to leave the the servers up for a few months and there's like one more expansion coming out, but the game is basically done. Um, so we hate to hear that because a lot of people really thought it was really good. So, uh, you know, a lot, of, I follow a lot of game developers on Twitter and they all they all see this as a real shame because they thought it was a, a really good project, a really good game. So, uh, Zach and Nick, do either of you guys play Civilization, the computer game? Not in years. Not in years. <laughs> not the well, PC. I played four. I haven't been on since. Huh? I'm not a PC gamer. Yeah, so. that's, yeah, yeah. Don't talk the rest of the radio show. Just be quiet. So no, I'm I'm messing with you, Zach. You know, but if you ever really want to learn what gaming really is about, I'll, I'll show you on a PC. I've heard that before. <laughs> Plenty of times. Uh huh. So, so, Nick, what was the last Civilization you played? Uh, Civilization Four. Four. Okay. Well, we had five for the past couple of years, which was pretty good. Uh, I, I played it because I had friends who played it. But Civilization Six is coming in October. So there's, uh, I guess there's an announcement video. I think it's October 21st. So this is just a franchise that doesn't stop, and it's one of the original. Just one more turn. And then next thing you know, it's five o'clock in the morning games. Did you ever do that? I did. Yeah. Just, many hey, times. just one more turn. You're, it's like 10 or 11. You're like, I got to go to bed. I got to work in the morning or whatever. Just one more turn. And the next thing you know, it's literally the sun's coming up. Right. So if people have never played Civilization, I, I there's no other game quite like it. What is it about? What is it like? Uh, you have these different nations and then you, through both trade and and building up your cities and warfare, you try to win. And, and you can either win diplomatically by getting enough nations, or you can win by building a rocket ship and being the first person in space. There's all these different victory conditions, but the only victory condition that matters is the one where you crush your enemies beneath your boot hill. Sounds How about cool. you, Nick? How did you like to win? Oh, uh, My favorite way to win was make a bunch of treaties, break them, and, yeah. and start a bunch of wars between the other players. Oh, yeah. It well, here, here, I have to admit, when I play a single player game of of, uh, of Civilization, at least like with four and five, I never finish it to the end. I finish it till I can build a nuke, and then after I nuke my first city, I feel satisfied. And then <laughs> Zach's in there. <laughs> Let's be honest, folks. It, it it really does encourage you to be evil in the game. It does. There's, but, there's- but, but there's a whole diplomatic aspect to it where you can do diplomacy with the, anyway if people have never played civilization they need to check it out all right moving us right along so the game i play i love to play games the game i play every every show is trying to balance the news i want to talk about versus how much time we have and i lose every time i nuke myself so let's move forward brian cranston of of course breaking bad and he was also in is it not, was it Malcolm? No, he wasn't in Malcolm in the Middle. He was in, he, he, he was the dad in was he, the Middle. Well, there's yeah. also another show called The Middle, right? Which is confusing. A- anyway, yeah. So Brian Canston is is working with the BBC, and they're going to do a series of um, television one shots based on Philip K. Dick stories. So, do you have you ever read much Philip K. Dick? I haven't. I'm, He's I'm, a mad genius. I mean, they the like Blade Runner was based on some of his stuff, and. Uh, uh, there, there's been some other movies, A Scanner Darkly, 
uh, some other stuff. Zach, do you know the movies I'm talking about? Well, I don't. He, you don't know Blade Runner? Yeah, I know about that Okay, movie, all right. Well, there's know. a Scanner Darkly, and there's a bunch of other movies. He's just this mad genius, and in his personal life was just as whacked out as his stories. But anyway, so BBC is, is going to work with Brian Cranston, and they're going to do uh, a series, because uh, he did a lot of short stories and novellas. So instead of an ongoing series, like each episode is going to be kind of like, like a Twilight Zone or something where it's self-contained. So I'm, as a Philip K. Dick fan, this dude, I can't stress, I'm going to say it again, mad genius. It just... Yeah, and every, everything the BBC touches that's just yeah. a little bit geeky. Yeah, they do so. They do well. a great job with. Yeah, I lived there for a couple of years, not in the BBC, but in England, obviously, the UK. And there is something different about. They just have a different approach to their TV. I mean, they they have like bottom of the barrel stuff, just like we do, but they have a different sensibility about how they do TV. So, uh, all right, moving moving right along, some more TV uh, news, and then and then we'll get to a break and talk, Captain. America, it's time for another news. I've got my, this is my trivia. Captain America trivia. All right. Nick. For absolutely no prize at all, other than bragging rights. You get a no prize okay. if you get this. You know, I know you know what a no prize is. Oh, I've gotten many of them. Over Have the you? Okay. Life. Yes, sir. So, what was the name of the publisher that published Captain America but before they became Marvel? It was timely. That's right. A timely answer. Ding, 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 ding. This man knows his stuff, Zach. He's looking at you with reverential <laughs> awe through the booth window. All right. We'll have more Captain America trivia as the show continues. All right. Supergirl. They had said CBS was like, we're going to renew it. And then they said, well, wait a minute. It kind of costs a little bit. So we're not sure we're going to renew it. It's going to get renewed, but it's landing over at the CW, which actually makes a lot of people happy because the CW has a pretty good handle on how to do superhero shows, yep. and it may be a better I a way to do shared universe because mm -hmm. since it was on CBS before, you really couldn't do shared universe. Yeah, and like when Barry visited, he had to go through like a portal or something. Still so, sounds strange to me. Like why would you know? Like I said, one being on CBS, I know. And the other. It's, it's yeah. legal. I said yeah. you should have just made them all in the same universe and been done with it, and exactly. then just not show them in each other's episodes that often. But anyway. So it's getting renewed. It's going to be on CW with a slightly less budget. I have to say, I started watching, and I've said this a lot on the show, and I've caught public crud for being in defense of Supergirl. I'm not saying it's the best show on TV, and I'm not saying it doesn't have corny moments, but it's grown on me. I started watching it with my wife because she liked it, and it's grown on me. And it does have, back me up on the Zach, it's got some good fight scenes in it sometimes. Yes, it does. It yeah. Now, hopefully, if they're cutting the budget, that we're not losing those good fight scenes, but we'll see. Mm -hmm. So... Maybe the Martian Manhunter won't transform his office. He'll just stay in his human form more often. You proved me wrong. It's a good show. It is. Yeah, yeah, it's got some corny moments. I mean, I'm not going to lie, but it's it's good. Yeah. So, uh, and also, I said this last week, I, I try not to mix up my politics and my entertainment and all that, but Supergirl is an inspiring character to young girls. And Hella Whip, Benoist, however you, Helena, but however you say her name, you know, there's all these articles about young girls wanting to meet her. So I, I hope they keep it on. You know, of course, they got to make a profit. It's a business, but I hope they keep it going. Now, here's the show that didn't make it. Marvel's Agent Carter did not make it. It's not coming back for season three. Now, I liked it okay. That was another show that my, me and my wife would watch. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not shedding any tears. I liked it for what it was. Did you watch it at all? I, I did. We just. We yeah. actually just finished it this week. Yeah, how did, I like Jarvis. He was my man. Yeah, Jarvis was a great. When he, character, him man. and the flamingo. When he called it the devil in pink, I did, that was just <laughs> the best. So, are you sad that it's not coming back? Um, not really. I mean, it was uh, it, it was a fun show, but it, it really had limited appeal. Yeah, and, it, it was only going to go so far, I guess. But now, one thing I I am bummed about is because it's part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And it was going to kind of tell the story of how S.H.I.E.L.D. got founded. So I'm kind of bummed about that. But, and, and it's ironic. I mean, I don't think the two are, are, are connected, but it's ironic that Agent Carter from old age passed away in the new Captain America movie. I don't think that's a major spoiler because it's not like a, you know, I mean, she was old, like really old. And it's not like it wasn't a big dramatic moment. Just Captain America gets news of her death and goes to her funeral. So I just think it's ironic the show got canceled at the same time the movie came out where Agent Carter, the character, has passed away. So, But I thought that was really cool that they worked 
the older Agent Carter or Peggy into the Captain America movies, right. you know, and didn't just ride her out, you know, after the first Avenger movie. So, uh, and they found a place for her in the in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And finally, and Zach, you texted me about this yesterday, but I already had a new news item. Nick, you're probably keeping up with this. The first reviews of X Men Apocalypse are in, and they are meh. That's that's the what I've seen. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard more of the same, more of the same, but bigger and longer. Nothing new, so I don't know. I'll check it out. I don't think I'm going to go opening night. It's uh, a movie I'll go see next Saturday night, maybe. Maybe. I'll, maybe. I'll do the same thing I did with Days of Future Past, Yeah, which I'll check it That's out on video. That's a great movie. I liked it. That was I liked awesome it a lot. Movie. Yeah. I remember going and seeing the first X-Men movie in the late 90s Yeah, and being like, wow, X-Men's on the big screen. Right. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, now, you know, the, the franchise is kind of Duando. run its course. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. they're doing... Now, Fox is not doing a bad job with Mm X-Men. I've enjoyed their movies. X-Men 3, when Bryan Singer left in the middle, not so good in my opinion. But all the others, very good. Okay. Um, But I wouldn't cry if it it came back to Marvel and they started doing the movies. And, you know, Nick, have you noticed that in the Marvel comic book universe, they're pumping the Inhumans and minimizing the mutants? Have you noticed that? I, I haven't really noticed that myself. Uh, yeah, but no, uh, they've actually come out and said they're doing that. Yeah, and they 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 did that with the Fantastic Four as well. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. They, well, they're not even publishing. Uh, yeah, the Fantastic, publishing yeah. The book. I yeah. think they're trying to kill it with Fox so they can get stuff back. Oh uh, well, Fox was doing I, a good job of that. On I the just road. don't. Yeah. Yeah. How can you follow Days of Future Past, which was an awesome movie? Yeah. How do you follow that up with a meh movie? I like, don't know. You, know, you just can't do it. I don't know. You know. I think what it is is it's actually going to be a good movie. A watchable good action movie yeah but they're kind of like there's nothing new here we've seen this you know so i don't think it's gonna that's why they're not saying it's bad yeah they're just saying eh kind of you know eh kind of shrugging and the shoulders it's the it's the third movie this 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 year with similar themes yeah superhero on superhero yeah action, we've got you know, it it's just, like okay enough uh i hear you i hear you on that so all right we're gonna do another captain america trivia then we're gonna go break when we come back we'll talk more captain america okay so, uh, what? All right, it was Captain America Comics number one from Timely that came out, and the cover is dated March 1941. What famous scene, Nick, is on that cover? Wow, I, I feel like we're playing Stump Nick. Yeah, and see how we could do with that. Yeah. But uh, I think that's that. That cover has Captain America punching Hitler. Hitler in the jaw. The yeah. Ding, ding, ding. The famous. They 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 came out yeah. swinging. Very first. Issue, period, Captain America, punching Hitler in the jaw on the cover. But let's let's be honest, the two creators are of Jewish ethnicity. So that doesn't make really surprise me that they got him punching Hitler in the jaw on the very first. And it, it's really cool in those in those books during that time period because Captain America comics was really punching Hitler in the jaw. They were they were raising money for the war effort, yeah, selling yeah, war yeah. bonds. Um, yeah. There's there's a lot of great advertisements for for war bonds in those old books. It's it it really was a part of the war effort. Yeah, oh yeah, time. definitely. Yeah, both genuinely raising money, but also the patriotic spirit and you know all that stuff. Right. So there was a lot of stuff published by the government and comic books and all that back then. These days it wouldn't fly. They'd be like, that's politically incorrect. Da, 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 da. But it got the job done back then, I guess. So anyway. We're, we're going to go to a break. When we come back, we're going to have more Captain America and other cool geeky stuff right here on Shane Plays Radio. Hold on to your butt. June 11th to 12th at the State House Convention Center in Little Rock, the River City Comic Expo is Arkansas's largest comic, toy, game, cosplay convention and now features the Little Rock Picture Show. Guests for 2016 include Neil Adams, Mike Zeck, James Silver, Larry Hama, Michael Golden, and Arkansas's own Mitch and Elizabeth Brettweiser, John Lucas, and Dusty Higgins. You'll find booth after booth with artists and dealers representing comics, toys, books, movies, games, and so much more. So come on out to the River City Comic Expo, June 11th and 12th at the State House Convention Center in Little Rock. RiverCityComicExpo.com. Fairly alarmed here. Comic book lovers, visit the wildstars.com today. today. From the mind of author and comic book industry expert Michael Tierney, it's not just a comic book, it's a comic book novel. The Wild Stars is sci-fi and so much more. Learn the explanations behind UFOs and space gods. This isn't the Twilight Zone. This is the region of the Milky Way galaxy known as 
The Wild Stars. We guarantee you've never read anything like it. The complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell, with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. today. Mega Wars Darknet. The classic online space strategy game has returned, bigger and better than ever before. Scout the universe and claim your empire. Construct, customize, and launch dozens of different starships. Battle thousands of opponents online in a team-based competition leading to the ultimate Battle of the Galaxy. Grab your slot today for the only online game where tactics and strategy still reign supreme. Visit Megawars.net and get options only available in our special pre-sales previews running now. Megawars.net The die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie. And the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays hey welcome back to shame plays geek talk radio a journey into the things we love, we're talking uh, Captain America with uh, Nick Cochran, local Captain America super fan. Uh, he, he, he tried to humbly deny that, but so far he's proved himself as a super fan. So what we're going to talk about a little bit, um, I don't want to go into any spoilers. But maybe just spend a few minutes on the new Civil War movie and then talk Captain America in general. But before we do that, here's my little trivia right here. Nick, I got another trivia question for you. You'll probably nail this. What issue of the Avengers did Captain America come out of hibernation and join the team? Number four. That's right. Ding, yeah. ding, ding. And, and ding. I, I don't own Captain or Avengers number four, and I, it you know it kind of makes me sad. <laughs> oh, you don't own it? Really? I do not own it yet. Well, you've no. got to tell us a little bit. You've got a pretty good classic comic book collection. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah I started. And they're that. all down in your truck right now that's unlocked. I'm joking. No, no. I'm joking. <laughs> no, um... We, I have, I, I started collecting um, in the, the you know, you, just a little bit of background on Captain America. You've got the Tales of Suspense where he comes in with Iron Man and shares a book with him. Right. Um, from. Uh, now, issue, that was after Avengers 4? That was after Avengers 4, right? Okay. And, um, and, and I started collecting, kind of buying and trading and doing everything I could to get those collected up. And I've, I've got those from number 58 all the way through Captain America number 100, where Captain America takes the book from Iron Man. and. Uh. <laughs> That's what really started. So he won. Yeah, that's what really started the first. Well, Iron Man got his own book. He did. Yeah, because I, I remember getting when I was a kid, younger. It's like, oh, Iron Man number one, and I opened it up expecting to see the very beginnings of Iron Man, and instead, it was a continuation right. of a Tales of Suspense story. And I was like, what? I felt kind of cheated. I'm like, this is supposed to be Iron Man number one. So, but yeah, it was a, it was a straight on. Like right in the middle of a cliffhanger continuation, right. so Iron Man got his own book. He yeah. just didn't get, but Captain America took over the numbering. It right? took over the numbering, and and it was it was Iron Man's book first. So, yeah, so yeah, whatever, Tony. <laughs> whatever, dude. Yeah, we knew you were going to turn into a futurist who's going to take away all our rights for our own good, Tony. Uh, so, what do you think? Just off the top of your head, do you have any idea of of what that um, might be worth? And I know comic what? books are only worth what they're paid for, but 
like the collection you have, do you have any idea of what it might be worth? I, I don't have any clue. And, and I, I have a lot of, of really rough copies. It's yeah. kind of one of those things for, for my sake to get my hands on. I, I don't know that, uh, that there's a whole lot of value there, but there was a lot of fun and it, it, it's meaningful to me. And so I'm, I'm glad right. that I have it. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at. I don't collect comics for the money. Uh, I mean, every now and then I'll sell some or something like that, but that's, that's not why I'm into it. Um, and you know, it, there are people who are, you know, and in fact, the, the comic book market almost got destroyed in the early nineties. I don't know if you remember this or not, but people came along and they started treating the comic books like the stock market, right? They're like, I'm going to buy a thousand copies of this because I think it's going to be, they were speculating. And so you had this artificial inflation of the amount of comic books being sold and then when the speculators got out, it crashed. So we almost lost like the the comic book industry as we know it because of that. Yeah, uh, there, like there were a lot of books that you would have thought would have been really great big books like X Force Number One and yeah. some of these other things. And and at the end of the day, there's so many copies of X Force right. Number One out there. It's just yeah, absolutely. Worthless. Yeah, it's worthless. Well, they did. Uh, there's kind of a famous. They shredded like a certain amount of uh, Superman number. Was it 75 where he died? I believe so. Yeah, they shredded a certain amount of those because there were just so many of them out there. So anyway, yeah, there, there's a whole. Anyway, I the the spec. I can remember reading, uh, like in Mile High Comics, they they would send you a, a monthly newsletter, and this guy had a column in there talking about how he was speculating on, like it was the stock market. He's like, I'm buying 500 of these, I'm buying a thousand of these, and I'm like, dude, you know that can't be good. And sure enough, it almost killed the industry. So, um. All right, what did you think of Civil War, the movie? Um, it, it was probably one of the best movies that I've seen in, in, since The Sandlot. I'll, I'll go that Oh, big. wow. I'm going to say it, it's wow. the biggest movie since The Sandlot. Wow, so that was big. So that was even bigger than The Winter Soldier and The First Avenger for you? I, I believe so. It was... Um, uh-huh. Yeah, that's pretty big stuff. You, you, got, you, got a, you got a uh-huh from Zach there. <laughs> what would you give that a 10? I guess uh, a ten. Yeah, 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 pretty pretty close because Sandlot is definitely a ten. So it's- <laughs> wow! Thank you, thank you so very much. <laughs> yeah, we had we've had this big discussion with Zach where I'm like, I don't give any movie a ten unless it's like right. Life is Beautiful or The Tree of Life or some world shattering. So I'm like, I'll give Captain America Civil War like an eight five or a nine. Yeah, but a nine for me is probably most other people's ten. Yeah, and I, right? I'm incredibly biased in this. Right. Yeah. Well. Right. The source. <laughs> so, what did you think of First Avenger and Winter Soldier? Um, I, I was a little bit let down by First Avenger, and it, and you know, watch rewatching it, it's, it really is a great movie. Yep. Um, going into the theaters looking to see my idol on screen, I, right. I, I was I, I pumped it's myself up. It's hard to live much. up to, right? Right. It's yeah. hard to. Li- I my take on the Captain America First Avenger. It's not my favorite, but it's better on subsequent right viewings. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we had a comic book movie uh panel in here a couple of months ago and michael brown who was sitting away that was his favorite and i think i think william brackeen said that was i can't think i can't remember if he said that was his favorite or not but michael brown was like first avenger is like my favorite and that that really surprised me because i thought it was good yeah was- but i didn't think it was my favorite comic book movie to date i think if you're if you're going to remove uh the christopher nolan batman trilogy which i think is spectacularly amazing absolutely uh, is probably the first Avengers that Joss Whedon did. That one hit every note for me. It felt like watching a comic book on screen. Uh, but there's been so many other good ones, you know. And and with Civil War, um, you know, I liked it a lot. There was a lot to like about it. But the thing that struck me the most that I've I've mentioned more than once, it's just like the the double fold big fight action scene, two page spread is finally here on yeah. movies right yeah that, the, an actual splash page occurred in that movie yeah it really did you know what i'm talking about the, the big yeah and I, i'm not going to give any spoilers you know people already know there's a big fight at the airport right and that was like wow i was really impressed with it i thought they nailed spider-man i thought they did a great job with um with black panther mm-hmm. so uh um, man too and man yeah, yeah and man did a good job well i'm talking about new characters okay. being introduced you know? right. yeah. and, uh, and that was the spider-man i grew up with I yeah mean, the first time was, i ever really saw spider-man on screen it was right so the cool. smart alecky young kid uh you know fresh face green behind the ears mm-hmm. right character right now i thought that richard garfield's character or portrayal andrew, 
Andrew, Andrew. I keep saying Richard Garfield because he did Magic the Gathering. So that's stuck in my hand. But Andrew Garfield got closer because he was doing the smart alecky thing, right? But this kid, what, Tom Hall, is Tom, that, I think it's Tom Holland. It's Holland. Holland. Holland yeah. It was. It felt like Spider Man. You know, it, it, so I think you're right. You know, we finally got like the and I Spider Man to me should be you got all kinds of problems. It's hard to get life to work. You're a smart Alec. You know, all that this this whole what they're doing with, with Spider Man in the comic books right now, where he's like basically Tony Stark running a he's running a worldwide industrial company. It's interesting and it's good, but it doesn't feel like Spider Man to me. Yeah, but and, you still felt the innocence with him. I mean, he still, you know, he was kind of innocent in a way, you know, when Stark met him. Well, no spoilers. Okay, yeah, no, no, no. There's, there's an innocent quality. Well, and, and there was a, there was a moment when they they had an opportunity for him to to really ruin the character, and they they nailed it when he was explaining why he did what he did and yeah. things that happened, and, and he didn't dive right. into it. He had that shame and that that guilt and right. remorse and the things that you and they just see, moved on. Yeah, and they moved on. It was awesome. well. I think that they they need, I think there's learning the lesson. People know these characters. They don't have to retell the long drawn out origin story every time, right? We know these characters. Right. We know what he's about. All he has to do to remind people is with great power comes must also come, you know, great responsibility, which is interesting because that came out of a throwaway line that, you know, Stan Lee just writing some comic book, but it really has super strong resonance to it. So, all right, Nick. Time for another time for another trivia. If, if you get me on one of these, it's going to be really embarrassing. Is it? All right. I, okay, I'm going to ask you a hard one then. Okay. You, now it's now the mission is to embarrass me. Yeah. Well. Okay. I won't. Now, <laughs> now okay. that you put it that way. <laughs> All right. So, um, let's see. Let me. Add, I, I got. Some. Okay. So what? What team was Captain America a member of in World War II before? the avengers the invaders the invaders yeah and who what what members compromised the or comprised the original now there's it, the the roster has changed over the years but the original invaders who were they uh namor yeah and uh the human torch the android human torch um, and and uh union jack nope union jack wasn't there not yet i don't think um, not in the very original and i guess i'm i would be leaving out bucky yeah, you got Bucky. And you got one other sidekick you're leaving out. Miss America? Nope. Toro. Toro, that's was right. Human. And the original Human Torch was an android who later became the Vision. Right. Yeah, So, which is a completely different origin story than what's in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, all right, here's another one. Zach, I won't throw this one at you. You ready? I'm going to throw this one at you, Zach. What alloy... Because I know Nick knows this one. I'm not even going to bother asking him. What alloy... Now, Captain America's had different shields. But the one that we know the most is the disc-shaped shield, right? What alloy is it made out of? Vibranium. And? Not sure. Alloy is a combination of multiple metals. But vibranium is one of them. Do you know the other one, Nick? Adamantium? No. It's not. That's what I thought, too, and I went and looked it up. The first, uh, the shield was made from um, adamantium or vibranium and steel, and it was an accident, and they've never been able to recreate it. And then when there was a scientist who tried to reverse engineer the shield and accidentally created adamantium. Oh, wow. Yeah, I didn't know that. That is a great story. Yeah, I had to go look that up, because I thought it was... I thought it was um, vibranium and adamantium as well i think that's just everyone has that head cannon right but really if you go back and look at it it's it was vibranium and steel uh and it made this unique indestructible shield uh and then they've never been able to reproduce it so now zach what shape was captain america's um first shield it was not a disc i'm not sure all right. Well, I know I'm gonna. We'll hold off on that one. If anybody out there listening wants to call in, because that's an easy one to me. It, I will call if anyone wants to call in five zero one eight two three zero nine six five or tweet me at Shame Place because the disc we all think of Captain America with that disc shape, but for the first, he didn't get that till how many? How long did he have his original shield, Nick? 
Like back in the timely comics days. You know, I don't remember. It was um, a while though, wasn't it? It, it, it seems like it, it wasn't, but I, I would have to go back and actually. Okay. Play. Well, maybe, maybe somebody out there knows. So, um, anyway, uh, yeah, the, the first shield and he's had multiple shields. He's had mm-hmm. like an energy based shield. Yeah. Uh, and now who, who, uh, do you know this, Nick? There's two Captain Americas now. Right. Okay, so who's the, who's the current, quote-unquote, official Captain America? Uh, Sam Wilson. Sam Wilson the Falcon. Yeah. And, and he actually looks pretty cool with the big red wings and the Captain America and all that. But he's carrying the shield because the shield actually belongs to who? The U.S. government? The government, right. Yeah. So whoever is, quote-unquote, Captain America carries the shield. So, and now, the, in fact, I've got a comic book here that I got on free comic book day with um with the new Captain America. Where'd that thing run off to? It's over here somewhere. And he's got more of the classic shield. Do you know the story on this shield what the story on this is? Because it seems to have like an energy blade at the bottom of it or something like that. Do you, oh, you, you have any idea what's going I, on with that? I, I have no idea. I'm so far behind Are you? the, the modern right. stuff. Because his original shield, like people would punch it and it would get dented real easy right. and stuff like that. So they, you know the the whole amazing indestructible shield that he would throw like a discus and do all kinds of crazy stuff. That was not an original part of the Captain America character. So, all right now, and I've got another question for both you guys and then we're going to take a break. What, uh, who now it's a different answer in the comic book universe versus the cinematic universe. Who created the super soldier serum? I have forgotten his name. Well, you could just say a, you know, <clears throat> describe. It doesn't have to be the because it's a weird name in the comic books. Um, gosh, you, you got me, Shane. Really? I, I, yeah, you stumped me. I, I, I know it's one of those things that uh, I should know this guy's name. I, I've said it, read it. Um, but I don't even have the name in front of me. I, I looked it up earlier today. I mean, you could even say a, you could generically describe what the, who the, who he was or what he was. Um, Gosh, his first name was Abraham, wasn't Something it? Something like that, yeah. So in the comics, he was a defected German spy. Right. Who kind of like the, you know, like we had some of the, in real life, some of the German rocket scientists came over and helped us out. Well, in, in the move or in the comic books, there was a German scientist who helped invent and they gave it to him and he went from scrawny Steve Rogers to big pumped up. Steve, and then he got shot. There was like a, there was a spy or something and they shot him and killed him. So the secret of the super soldier serum died with him. Died with him, yeah. And they've never been able to make another one. Now, Zach, they've either they've either said this outright in the movies or they've hinted at it. Who invented the super zero, super uh, soldier serum in the movies in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? And Civil War basically told you. You know what I'm talking about, Nick? They basically tell you who made the super soldier serum. And I think they kind of hinted at it in the first Avenger movie. Was it the Red Skull? No. Yeah, I mean, he had some kind of Tony variation Stark. of it. Ter- Tony Stark. It was Tony did. Stark, from what I can tell. What did he have in the back of the car? Well, in it couldn't War? have been. T- Tony Stark wasn't, That's wasn't right. born yet. Huh? <laughs> no, to- not Tony Stark. Howard Stark. <laughs> Howard Stark. My bad. Yeah. That's right. It's, Howard Stark. Yeah. Oh. In the movies, Howard Stark either invented it outright or had a lot to do with it. And yeah. so, yeah. He definitely, yeah. Yeah. But in the movies, uh, and there was a there was sort of a German scientist helping him out in the movies, and they kind of, but but in the movies they imply more that Howard Stark had a lot more to do with it. It, it was Erskine just came. Yeah, from Abraham there Erskine. Go, there Nick. it is. Yeah. Yay! All yeah. right, good job, Nick. All right, I've got a tough one for you after the break. We can, we're going to cut the break when we come back. We're going to talk more Captain America with Zach and Nick Cochran. Take us to a break, Zach. Hold on to your butt. June 11 to 12 at the State House Convention Center in Little Rock, the River City Comic Expo is Arkansas's largest comic, toy, game, cosplay convention and now features the Little Rock Picture Show. Guests for 2016 include Neil Adams, Mike Zeck, James O'Bear, Larry Hama, Michael Golden, and Arkansas's own Mitch and Elizabeth Brett Reiser, John Lucas, and Dusty Higgins. You'll find booth after booth with artists and dealers representing comics, toys, books, movies, games, and so much more. So come on out to the River City Comic Expo, June 11th and 12th at the State House Convention Center in Little Rock. RiverCityComicExpo.com. Fairly alarmed here. 
comic book lovers visit the wildstars.com today from the mind of author and comic book industry expert michael tierney it's not just a comic book it's a comic book novel the wild stars is sci-fi and so much more learn the explanations behind ufos and space gods this isn't the twilight zone this is the region of the milky way galaxy known as the wild stars we guarantee you've never read anything like it the complete comic book novel took 20 years to tell with one reviewer noting, the story of the Wild Stars stretches ambitiously across space and time, from small town murders to the destruction of planets, with every event given multiple layers of meaning. If you haven't read The Wild Stars, you're missing out. Visit thewildstars.com today. Megawars Darknet. The classic online space strategy game is returned, bigger and better than ever before. Scout the universe and claim your empire. Construct, customize, and launch dozens of different starships. Battle thousands of opponents online in a team-based competition leading to the ultimate Battle of the Galaxy. Grab your slot today for the only online game where tactics and strategy still reign supreme. Visit Megawars.net and get options only available in our special pre-sales previews running now. Megawars.net the die is cast. Plunge into worlds of fantastic adventure where dragons lie and the undead stalk the shades of your mind's imagines. Where creatures of legend plunder wealth through the horror of their passage. Monsters grim and foul hold the ecstasy of gold and the renown of glory. All this and more awaits you and your friends in the unlimited, fantastic world of the Castles and Crusades role-playing game from Troll Lord Games. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy today. A rules-light, adaptable game that has stood the test of time. Twelve years in constant publication with no new additions, Castles and Crusades is the original easy-to-play attribute check system. Join us and unleash your imagination. Visit your friendly local game store or trolllord.com to get your copy of castles and crusades today shame plays radio is blessed to have sponsors and we appreciate them very much however did you know that you can also support the show as an individual for as little as one dollar an episode simply go to patreon.com slash shame plays Hey, welcome back to Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio, a journey into things we love. We're talking Captain America today. Uh, joined by Nick Cochran, who's just a, a buddy of mine and, and loves Captain America. And when I say that, I mean he really loves Captain America. And of course, Zach is the, the guy in there running the show, producing things, is a big comic book nerd too, so he's joining in on things. Now, we asked earlier in the show, no one's, and, and I asked Nick not to answer it because I knew he would know it. Zach, you didn't know it yet, but... What's the, what's the shape? And I'll give this out before the end of the show, but if anybody wants to call in or tweet me at Shane Plays with the answer for bragging rights, you're welcome to. But you can call 501-823-0965. And what shape was Captain America's original shield? Not his round shield like we think of it. So, all right, I've got a tough one for you here, Nick. This is my Captain America trivia page right here. That's the ominous wings of doom. <laughs> ominous wings of doom. Um Captain America first appeared on film, like in a movie. When I have no idea, I you know I have. You want to take a stab at it? I want to say it would have been in the fifties. You want to you want to take a guess, Zach? I'm young. Nineteen forty four. They used to do these movie serials. Yeah. Right, where they'd show five minutes of it before the main movie, and then they would end on a cliffhanger, and you'd have to come back the next week to see the next part. And there was a Republic serial called Captain America that was loose. He had the uniform and everything, but it was still kind of loosely based on Captain America. And that was in 1944. Yeah. And it was, I, I've seen pictures of it. Yeah. And uh, the, the uniform actually was really good looking. It looked that. pretty good for that time period. Yeah. Yeah, the only thing about it that I didn't like, if you see it in color, was the star on his chest was red. Right. But other than that, it looked really good. Uh, I love watching those old movie serials. They're just cheesy, but I really enjoy them. Now, of course, then in the 70s, you had that weird made-for-TV Captain America stuff where his shield was the windshield for his motorcycle. Right. You know what right. I'm talking about? Very strange. They're yeah. fun to watch in a cheesy kind of way. 
like if you want to watch the old Six Million Dollar Man or whatever, but they're kind of fun to watch, but they're not great. Don't get me wrong. Then, yeah. of course, in the 90s, was the late 80s or early 90s where you had the Captain America movie that uh, it looked good. It was the first time I went, hey, that costume actually looks pretty good. <laughs> and the shield looks, pre- but the movie itself, not so good. Yeah. Uh, but the makeup and the costume was good. And then, of course, we started getting the Marvel cinematic movies, which, you know, Chris Evans is doing great. Right. Um, one thing I, re- I really enjoyed was the shield play. Uh, that, that they did in, in Civil War, like how he uses his shield and all that stuff. So a- Absolutely. And yeah. uh, big spoiler on that with, with Captain America and Spider-Man. I'm not going to throw yeah, it out yeah, there, yeah. such a Well, most line. people know it if they, yeah. Yeah, yeah if they, uh, hey, I forgot to mention earlier, don't forget, check out Game Goblins. They're one of our main sponsors. We appreciate them, appreciate them very much. They're Central Arkansas's premier retailer, Magic the Gathering, Warhammer 40K, board games, card games, RPGs, miniatures, and hobby accessories. Call Game Goblins at 501-224-GAME or visit them at GameGoblins.com. Don't forget we're doing organized role-playing game play with them at the River City Comic Expo. Uh, you can call them at 501-224-GAME or visit them online at GameGoblins.com. First-time customers mention Shame Plays and receive $10 off your purchase of $50 or more. That's Game Goblins in West Little Rock. Tell them Shame Plays sent you. Okay, so the answer to the shield, it was triangular. If you've never seen that, Zach, you should look it up. Look up the original Captain America. Like you said, Nick, it, not trying to, no pun intended, it's shield-shaped. It's got yeah. that classic shield shape. And I, I'd love to know. I haven't had a um, time to check it out, but I'd love to uh, uh, find out when exactly he got his indestructible circular shield. I think that would be really cool. I don't. For some reason, I was thinking that happened in the Marvel Age, but I guess it happened back in the Timely comics i don't know that it was the indestructible shield back then yeah i'm wondering when did he get his indestruct i really don't have time Uh, we got about two minutes left i'll see if i can find it really quick uh to find it out but tell us uh just real quick why do you love captain america so much nick um for for me i really identify with the character um man i believe i'm I'm a really old-fashioned kind of guy and sometimes feel like you know the world's moving the world's leaving us behind yeah, yeah. absolutely and, and yeah. captain america that's that is who he is he he woke up in a new era and uh and i, I really see that and really see a lot of my values in the character and 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 like enjoy you know reading those stories the the, the best captain america stories are the one that really get into his values and that right that old-timey american feel right well they you know and they kind of make teasing jokes about it in the movie, like when he's like language in Avengers mm-hmm. Avold, and then they give him a hard time about it the rest of the movie. But I feel like that sometimes. Yeah. You know, like where I work, you know, there's a little bit of profanity. I don't want to hear that, you know, yeah. but it's like you said, the world's kind of passed us by. But one thing I, I've, I've enjoyed about the movies, especially Winter Soldier and Civil War they have not backed up his backed off of the fact that he's going to stand on the side of Liberty, right? right? They haven't tried to use Captain America to push some liberal agenda. They've let him be Captain America, right? He's the Captain America. That's going to let shield fall rather than take, take advantage of people's rights. Most, most, you know, watching the first Avengers movie, that great line when, when uh, Thor and Loki are fighting. And then all of a sudden you, you hear they th- they say there are gods. They're fighting, right? And um, there's only one god. There's only one god. And he doesn't dress like that, and <laughs> and and that was his character because right. that, that didn't come out of the writ- writers at all. That was right. that was letting the character be the character. Let it, let really, the character, yeah, really, what made that such a great movie, right? Because they could have been like, well, let's use this as a as an excuse to have Captain America espouse plurality or something like right. that. But we got to wrap. There's so much more. Next, thanks so much for being in, yes, folks. Catch us next week. On Shane Plays Geek Talk Radio, we're going to have uh, Dr. Travis Langley in talking about this, the psychology of superheroes. Shane Plays Radio. Thanks for listening.